tuned into Quick Charge, the high voltage podcast bringing you the top stories in electric vehicles and sustainable energy daily. And it's all powered by electric. Welcome to Quick Charge. It's October 17th, 2024, and I'm your host, Joe Boris. Now, if you've been listening for the last several months, you know we've tried a couple of different formats kind of to see what works and what doesn't. One of the things that's worked out really well has been the interview segments where we interview people from the electrification space, from the EV industry, bring them on the show, ask them questions, and really try to learn as much as we can about what's going on throughout the electrified vehicle space. And today is going to be one of those days. We've got Nate McDonald. He's the multi-brand manager at Ford Pro, and he's here today to talk to us about a revolutionary new product from Ford Pro that helps fleet managers understand which of their assets, which of their internal combustion assets are primed for electrification and primed for electrification today. Nate, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks, Joe. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you, man. So, you know, as we're sitting here talking, we've already been talking for a few minutes, kind of warming up, stretching our legs, if you will. Um, One of the things that we've been talking about is how important fleet assessment tools have become to fleet operators and fleet managers, especially in the commercial vehicle space, right? So your new tool, this e-switch assist is something that is really going to help people that are running large fleets of F-150s or e-transit vans understand which of their assets are prime candidates to be electrified and kind of walk them through when to time that out and when to electrify. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a new complementary tool that Ford Pro is offering. Uh, it's e-switch assist has actually been in uh, several European markets for uh, several months, and we've seen customers really benefit uh, from its use. And it helps detail which vehicles are suitable to switch from internal combustion uh, to EVs. And it does that through a combination of connected vehicle data and some algorithms developed by Ford Pro. And so at at its core, it estimates the energy usage a vehicle uh, uses on a daily basis and then translates that to the number of charges required to support that energy usage day to day. So this is a day to day assessment uh, vehicle by vehicle on what how many charges are required to support a vehicle, a fleet's vehicle. So just to be clear for people who do have Ford Pro who use that dashboard as part of their everyday life right now, this is different from your standard telematics package that you charge a monthly fee for, correct? Yeah, absolutely. These are separate packages. So they're both leveraging modems, but eSwitch Assist is a standalone product. And once again, completely complimentary. So through FordPro.com in the marketplace, you can add this to your account uh, and then you enroll your VINs and then it starts working in the background. But yeah, absolutely separate from eTelematics. So I love this idea that it's constantly working in the background to analyze my fleet, because at the end of the day, what we're looking for is total cost of ownership to be reduced so that our profitability of our fleet can go up, whether that's a delivery fleet or a work vehicle fleet, whatever it is. How does that notification happen? If I'm a fleet manager and I've got this running, do I get like a like a ping on my desktop that says, you know, VIN ending 1456 is ready for electrification. Trade it in today at your local Ford dealer. Yeah. So I think actually one of the benefits of this tool is that it doesn't stop. So uh, a customer goes in and adds their vehicles to the tool. So they're aware of which ones are which ones are currently under assessment. We recommend, so you'll see results in about 48 hours. You'll start seeing results. We recommend kind of a minimum of two to three weeks of letting that roll. So as your vehicles are being used, data is coming in, it's being analyzed, and you'll see those results day to day. Um, the longer you let it roll, you're actually going to be, come to see better and better results. So we have customers um, you know, experience in the European markets. They weren't expecting to buy EVs you know, in the next day, in the next couple months. But what they were doing is they were going and adding this to their accounts a year ahead of time. And so they began to see those results. And when they came back with months and months of data, they were able to get like real confidence in those numbers. And they were surprised to see what large percentages of their fleets were going to be eligible to switch without essentially any disruptions in, in their operations. And that's a key part of any kind of electrification strategy, right? It has to work. 
we talk about this all the time that there's two kinds of sustainability in the world of business and fleet vehicles, right? There's sustainability like sustaining the planet, but there's sustainability that your business has to be able to maintain. And maybe not in exactly the same way as before, but in a way that's not so disruptive that you eventually lose profitability and have to close your doors. Within the programs that you've seen in Europe and the UK, you mentioned that your customers are able to electrify a larger percentage of their fleet than they originally thought. Are we talking about a jump from maybe 10 and 15% to 20%? Or are we talking a jump from like 10 or 15% to 30 or 40% in some cases? Yeah. So the total number of assessments that we've actually completed through eSwitch Assist were over 38,000 uh, vehicles wow. have been assessed. So, so quite, a, quite a few of that population. Um, there is over 50% uh, percent that we would consider either highly likely eligible to switch or potentially eligible to switch. So it's a large number. So the tool, I think, is a good point because the tool itself bins these assessments in, in, three separate, in three separate categories. One is eligible to switch. And that means when we look across all the data that we have, um, there aren't any instances where the vehicle is using more energy than one overnight charge would require. So they, uh, the entire time, one overnight charge is kind of able to satisfy their needs. The second category is uh, likely able to switch or potentially able to switch. And this means a customer would, would need to charge somewhere between one and two times a day. So this could be they're using 10% more energy uh, on the vehicle than an overnight charge could uh, supply. So that means they might have to top off at lunch. And then over two charges a day, so energy required to, to maintain the exact same operations, uh, we say that's probably not, not a good fit. I think that's a fair way of doing it because I think the idea that you'd have to stop once a day to refuel your truck makes a ton of sense to people. Like, okay, I've got a longer route. At some point during the day, I'll probably have to, whether I'm plugging into a diesel pump or a gas pump or an electricity charger, I have to plug in for a few minutes. I'm going to use that time to you know, go buy a coffee, go take a restroom break or whatever it is. So I think that makes a ton of sense. When you talk about an overnight charge, you're talking specifically about a level two charge, like on a uh, Ford Pro AC charger, correct? You're not talking about necessarily, uh, you know, a DC fast charge, like some of the larger commercial school buses or semi trucks would still need a 60 kilowatt charger and an all night charge, right? Yeah, right. That's how we visualize it's like an overnight charge. You can picture um, a driver going home to their house with a Ford Pro level two charger, getting a full eight hour charge and then getting back out on the road. So no, it doesn't require something like a DC fast charge. That actually brings up a really good point. There's a lot of fleet vehicles, especially in scenarios like uh, medical lab deliveries or you know, uh, salespeople or executive fleets where the vehicle is not necessarily a work truck, but still has to go on site sometimes. And an F-150 Lightning is certainly one of those vehicles that a number of people in these other types of roles within a company, within a large organization might drive home and plug in at night in their home. Does Ford Pro have a mechanism in place there to reimburse those or to track those employees that are charging at home for the energy that they are putting into the vehicle so they can be reimbursed in the same way that they pay, you know, with a gas card or something like that for those vehicles? Uh, yeah, so that is a part of our home charging software. So employers are able to reimburse employees that charge at home. And one other thing that's new recently is Ford Pro's commercial charging cash. So this is a $2,000 incentive that can go towards the purchase of uh, charging hardware or uh, just to reimburse fleets. Wow, so that's an incredible incentive because that's $2,000 in addition to any federal or state or utility incentives. That's straight from Ford. Yep. This is directly from Ford at the time of purchase. That's awesome. So um, yeah, it, it sounds kind of like a no brainer, right? Like if you've got Ford vehicles in your fleet, you've got a complimentary package. that's going to enable you to see if those Ford vehicles are prime for electrification, it's going to immediately have a one-to-one -one replacement for your F one fifties or your transit vans in terms of F one fifty lightning or E transit. I mean, what's the downside, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think the what we've heard from 
uh, the European markets is that this really changed the conversation with fleet managers. So there was a lot of customers coming in and expecting that their fleet were not going to be good fit for EVs or it'd be a really small, a uh, small portion of them. And what eSwitch was able to do is to pinpoint exactly which one of those vehicles um, are going to be suitable to switch. Uh, it is, you know, we like to think of it as this is what your vehicle is telling us about the energy consumes and whether or not it's a good match to EV. And it's not based on some study that some egghead in some university or some national lab did. It's based on your data, your vehicles, your route, your gas bill. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so the power of being able to pull data directly from the modem and we're combining that with energy usage is that we're able to take into account all of the specific things that impact that vehicle. So this is the amount of distance that driven that is driven. This can be driver habits, right? So how heavy or how light are they on the gas? This is about loads in the back. So if you have a lot of equipment versus a little bit of equipment, this all gets funneled into energy consumption and for that specific vehicle, which is what makes this so powerful. Nate, we're coming to the end of our time commitment here. I really appreciate you coming on the show. One last question before we get to the rollout. How new do the vehicles have to be in order to work on this? Like if I've got a fleet of 2020 Fords or 2022 Ford Transits or F-150s that are on a 36-month lease that are coming up and I want to get them on here, are they going to be new enough to have all that data or is this for vehicles that are like 2024 and newer? Yeah, so this tool is... uh is for assessing transits, switching to e-transits and F-150 switching to F-150 Lightning. So those are the, the two vehicle lines that are supported. So transits that are newer than 2020 um, are eligible to be enrolled in the tool and F-150 is newer than 2021. That's awesome. Great stuff. Now for everybody listening to this, that's Nate McDonald at Ford Pro. How can people get a hold of you? How can people learn more about the e-switch assist system? Yeah, so please visit FordPro.com uh, eSwitch Assist to learn more uh, and roll. All right, we'll have a link to that in the show notes. Nate, thanks so much for being on the show. Yep, thank you. Once again, that was Nate McDonald from Ford Pro. If there's someone out there in the electric vehicle space in the automotive universe that you'd like us to talk to and you want to hear more from, be sure to let us know in the comments. We'll do the best we can to get them on the show. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next interview, and we'll see you again Monday.